Welcome to our lecture online. To expand what we did on the previous video, we now have a vector field in three dimensions. We have an I component, a J component, and a K component. And assuming that this is a conservative vector field, there should be a function of X, Y, and Z, such that the gradient of the function gives us back the vector field, which means that the partial derivative with respect to X of the function equals Y squared. The partial derivative with respect to Y of the function should give us this component, the j component, and the partial derivative of the function with respect to z should give us the k component of our vector field. So how do we find the function? That's really what we're looking for, right? f equals question mark. How do we find that? Well, we start over here, and what we're going to do is we're going to take the integral of both sides of this with respect to x. So it's basically the partial derivative in reverse. It's the integral, but only with respect to x. So we get the following. We take the integral of the partial with respect to x of f. And so I'll put a little x here. So that indicates that we're integrating with respect to x. And this should be equal to the integral of y squared dx with respect to x. And so if we do that, we will get back the function, and on the right side, we get back x times y squared plus, let's say, another function, g, which will be a function of x, oh, not x, because we took the partial integral of that, of y and z, because if we have a function of y and z and we take the partial derivative of that with respect to x, this goes to zero, and we end back with what we started. So now the next thing we need to do is let's take the partial derivative of this with respect to y and set it equal to this. So now we're going to take the partial derivative with respect to y of f, which is the partial derivative with respect to y of this quantity here, which is x y squared plus g of y z. And if we do that, we get the following. So here we get... Um, Let's see, that would be equal to 2xy plus g prime of yz. And so this would be g, that would be the partial derivative with respect to y. And we know that that is going to be equal to this quantity right here, the j component, which is 2xy plus e to the 3z. All right, let's see here. We have the 2xy, we have the 2xy. That means that g prime of yz equals e to the 3z. So g prime of yz is equal to e to the 3z. And now if we take the integral of both sides with respect to y, so we take the integral of that with respect to y, so g prime of yz, and that is equal to the integral of e to the 3z dz. All right, so what do we get when we do that? Well, let's go over here. A little bit more board space. So on the left side, we end up with g as a function of y and z is going to be equal to the integral of this. So that would be equal to y times e to the 3z because we're taking the integral with respect to y. So this is basically a constant. So we have y times this. But now, since we're doing it with respect to y, we should also have another function, let's call it h of z, because we can have another function of z only, in such a way that when we take the partial derivative of this with respect to y, this will go to zero, so we have to account for that possibility. So now, we know what g of yz is, we can add it to here, and so from here we now have a new value for the function, f can now be written as x, y squared plus g of yz, which is right here, which is y e to the 3z plus h of z. Now the last thing we want to do is we want to take the partial derivative of this with respect to z and set it equal to this. So the partial of f with respect to z, as we have it written here, is going to be equal to, well that goes to zero, this will be equal to 3y e to the 3z and the partial of this that would be plus h prime of z the partial of h with respect to z 
and then we're going to set that equal to what we have over here which is this component right there so this is equal to 3 y e to the 3 z which means that h prime of z is equal to 0 and so we can simply ignore it now we have the value of, let's see here, so we have the value of h of z, so if this is equal to zero, then all this can be is simply just a constant. And then finally we can say that the function is equal to x y squared plus y e to the 3 z plus a possible constant, because we take the derivative of constant, we get zero, and this then becomes the function we were looking for. So now we need to do one more thing. We think we have the right answer. And again, we assume that if this is the right answer, if we take the gradient of this, we should get back our original vector field. And assuming that, of course, if that's correct, then our vector field is a conservative vector field. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the partial derivative of this with respect to x, y, and z to see if we get the three components to make sure we did this correctly. So the first thing we're going to do is the partial of f with respect to x. And this is going to be equal to y squared. And this goes to zero. So did we get the right answer? And the answer is yes. So now we take the partial of f with respect to y, and that would be equal to 2xy plus e to the 3z. And did we get the correct value here? And the answer is yes. So that's correct. And finally, the partial of f with respect to z. And notice that this goes to 0, and here this would simply be 3ye to the 3z. And did we get the right result, 3ye to the 3z? We did. And so we did find the function in such a way that if we take the gradient of that function, we get back the original vector field. And again, the trick is on how to do this correctly. We first identify the three partial derivatives of the function and what they should be equal to. Then we start with the first one here and we take the integral with respect to x of both sides. We end up with a function that could contain both y's and z's. Then we take the partial with respect to y, set it equal to this component, solve for g, and then we go ahead and take the partial of that with respect to z, set it equal to this, and then you get the final result. And that's how that's done.